Welcome to the Dawn Jarvis Show with Dawn Jarvis, the diverse nurse. And in this podcast, we will be talking about healthcare, self care, diversity, careers, and well being from a black woman's perspective. We're really happy that you're here. So if you're ready, let's get on with the show. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Dawn Jarvis show and I'm Dawn Jarvis the diverse nurse and this is the podcast where we talk to and about busy leaders, professionals and business owners. I learn about who they are and what they do and why they do it and how they prioritize their own health and well-being to stay focused, positive and productive. Today, I am delighted to be joined by my wonderful friend, Simone Henry, the founder of Eshe Music. Simone is my business bestie and my accountability partner. We met on a retreat in Florida just before the pandemic began in 2020. We were members of the mastermind together and we are really good friends. We speak most weeks and talk about all sorts of things. Today, we're going to be talking about how to maximise your music career and the importance of thinking beyond radio when it comes to marketing your music. The weird but true fact that it's possible to make a living with your music, even if your music is not mainstream, and the fundamental importance of building a fan base before trying to get on large platforms. Hi, Simone. How are you? It's good to see you. How are you doing? Hi, I'm happy to be back. Thank you. Yes, I am good doing to well. See you. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks. And it's absolutely amazing to see you. And let me introduce you properly. Um, Simone grew up singing in church in many different groups and choirs with many different styles that fostered her love of music. She has a business degree from Morgan State University, which is a historically black college and university, so HBCU, I only know what that meant today actually, and located, she's located in, um, which was located in Baltimore, that's the Morgan State University. She uses those skills to help independent Christian recording artists to brand themselves and to build their fan bases so they can make money with their music now Simone has already sort of mentioned that she was the first person I interviewed on my podcast just over a year ago so much has happened since then to the world and to us and I think it's been a challenging time for us and um, both personally professionally and health-wise how have things been for you since we last spoke on air well, uh, um, a lot of things have happened, like uh, I am now full time with my coaching business Yay. and um, <laughs> my as far as uh, the health and wellness goes, um, things have I've been good for the most part. But, you know, um, every now and then uh, this disease that's in my body, the sickle cell disease, it likes to flare up and uh and do weird things. So I learned recently that, or I realized recently that it kind of goes in phases. So I was, yeah. I was having a phase where I was getting pneumonia all the time. And now um, I feel like I'm in a phase where I'm having like a full body pain crisis and, oh. you know, have to go and get uh, the, the super, super duper heavy duty pain medication from the hospital oh, wow. in order to oh, take wow. care of it. So but most days I'm good. Most days I'm good. Um, you know, I try to take care of myself. I try to, um, you know, drink lots of water, eat healthy. Um, lately I've been getting out more, getting more sunshine and, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to make sure I take care of my mental health as well. So (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. And we talked a little bit about that last time, didn't we? So um, Simone has got sickle cell anemia, which is a long term condition that has to be has to be managed. And last time when you spoke, we talked about how to manage that during a pandemic when we were isolated. And it's a continuing it's a continuing illness and things change. And, you know, we talked about isolation. We talked about mental health. And we also talked about the importance of looking after and meditation and sort of like having a routine as well. And I think I think also since you um, you know you're doing your business full time, that makes it even more important, doesn't it, to sort of like look after yourself because that's uh, because you, you know your business life goes on regardless of whether you're feeling unwell and everything. So and I know that we've personally talked about you know the importance of resilience and having sort of like things in place so that you know even when you're not feeling your best, that your business still goes on and, and, and I know that's you know that is something that I think we both 
you know, um, that we sort of like, you know, have to think about that quite a lot, isn't it, Simone? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, as a, as an IT professional for so many years, yeah. one of the things that I really appreciate is good software that allows you to automate some of your processes. Absolutely. Um, so there are days when I don't feel like writing an email or, um, or posting on social media. Um, it's really nice to have um, some systems in place that automate some of these things for you. So it doesn't look like you've disappeared off the, <laughs> off the face of the earth. Like you're still out there. I'm still here. I'm still working. Yeah. So that's that I appreciate a lot. Yeah. And it's also it's, uh, it's automation is like a, uh, another member of your team, isn't it? I think I'm a bit of a technophobe. But so um, I'm, you know, I'm just coming on a bit sort of like um, automation train um, and learning it. So, yeah, yeah, it really is a thought. So we're talking about maximising your music industry um, today. And um, you, uh, you know, you, you stated that it's important to think beyond radio when coming to marketing your music. So I know that a lot of people you help, they want to get their music onto the onto the onto the radio. That's the, that's their goal, isn't it? And yes. um, but you think that you have to think beyond that. So what? So tell me more about that. Well, um, the thing that, and I don't know if I work with Christian artists, um, gospel artists, Christian hip hop artists, traditional, um, traditional choirs, groups, uh, people like that. And, um, and they tend to be older. They tend to be in my age range. I'm 47. Mm -hmm. Um, They tend to be in that, in that age range. And, you know, we grew up listening to the radio. That was the easiest way for us to learn what new music was out, find out what was good, um, find out where the concerts and everything were. Um, And so when artists are, they're trying to, they're trying to get their music out there. When they put out a new single or a new album, the first thing that they think of when, when it comes to marketing their music is, I need to put this out and get this out on the radio so that people can hear it. Well, the things that they forget uh, are the streaming platforms. They forget about the internet. They forget about social media. And they they think that, you know, radio is the way to make it. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is things have changed so much in the past 20 or 30 years in the music industry. And radio has so much more competition now. So- looking at radio as the be all and end all to get your music out to listeners is not really the way to go in in the world we live in today. So, you know, so that's one of the things that, um, that's a constant thing that I have to re-educate artists on. Um, When I, when I go to, when I'm hanging out with people in the music industry in the secular world, you know, they never mention radio. Radio is yeah, not really, really a thing that they're yeah. that they're pushing their independent artists towards. But for some reason in the gospel world, that's where we that's where we're pushing our artists. Mm-hmm. And they get their hearts broken and it's not working for them. And so I'm I'm out here just really trying to push this message. Look beyond radio. Look at other means for getting your music in front of people, getting your music into people's ears so that they can hear them, hear it. You know, um, radio is, is not the, the, the be all and end all of marketing your music. No. And I think, and I think, you know, um, I'm a little bit older than you, um, but I do remember as a child that radio was king, you know, before video and and when video, even before the internet video sort of changed things a bit, didn't it really? Um, but, you know, so, and, and now, you know, it's amazing the ways that you can buy music, that you can access music and you, you don't even have to pay for it. Do you really? You can access it in lots of different ways. And there are people 
I know my son, he loves all sorts of different music, but he accesses it on the on the internet through streaming and through all different things. And you know, he'll say to me, Oh, this is a great, you know, you know, he likes gospel music and you know, that's all kinds of music. And he'll say, Oh, this is a great song that, that I've heard, but he'll have he'll have um heard it on Spotify. And um, you know, and I've got a a, a nephew, um guy who did the music for this podcast actually, and um he put his thing at his his original music straight out on Spotify straight out on Spotify so there's all that as you said there's all sorts of different ways to get your music out there so you know but I think that you know maybe people like me in my age range they remember what worked in in the, in the past and um and it's and it's about forward thinking so how do you help people to do that to sort of like think more creatively around where their music's going to be well, I talk to them, I try to educate them, I do uh, master classes and courses, and um, I actually have a, have an event coming up, a three-day event coming up, where I am uh-huh. going to go through all of the different things that that um, artists should be doing to, mm-hmm. to market themselves, brand themselves, and monetize, mm-hmm. and monetize yeah. their music. You know, all of these artists, they are putting their music out on Spotify and YouTube and all these different places, mm-hmm. but what they're not doing is they're not using those uh, tools to their full extent. Yeah. You know, Spotify gives, gives artists a lot of different tools to, to yeah. get their music in front of people. But most of the artists I come across, they don't know about these tools and they're not using them. And I think and I think because I I say that this podcast is going to be on uh, YouTube as well. And so I've discovered the world of YouTube. And like you said, it's it's a whole different world, isn't it, really, that I didn't I didn't I didn't know I didn't know existed. And so there are sort of things that you have to do, even the titles, you know, who you you know, who where you promote it and the social media you promote stuff around it's a whole different thing so you know it'd be really helpful to sort of like have that and there's some guide around that so you know we've often talked about you know making um making money both from our full-time as, as a full-time business owner and we're both doing that at the, at the minute and um but I wanted to talk about the, the weird but true fact that it's possible to make music make a living from your music even if your music's not mainstream so I'm really interested in that because I think you know um gospel music isn't mainstream but it is it is it's there isn't it really and very influential you can see that in in adverts you can see that in television programs the way they put gospel music behind mainstream what the better word singers and everything so we've talked we've talked about sort of like your wish that you know that you want you know gospel artists you know christian artists to be able to make their living um um, from music so you know you know what are the ways that people can make their living um, from their music with, even if it's not mainstream well the the, the reason why they can make uh, a good living with their music even though their music isn't mainstream is because we live in a world now where um, everything is pretty much on demand and mm-hmm. we are not because radio isn't king Right now, internet is the king. Yeah. And because people can go to which far corners of the internet to find the thing that they like the best, nothing is being necessarily fed to us and saying, mm-hmm. hey, you should, um, you have to listen to this because this is good and this is what we think you should listen to. That's yes. not necessarily happening on the internet. Yeah, there's algorithms that kind of say, yeah, we we think um, that you're going to like this because you've listened to this already. Yeah. Um, but in in reality, you don't actually have to follow that algorithm if you don't want to. I get I get music suggestions all the time that I completely ignore because I'm going <laughs> after what I like. Right. What yeah. I discovered on YouTube. And yeah. I'll add that song to my playlist rather than what, you know, um, mm-hmm. the music the music app um, suggested to me. Um, So because people are just picking what they like the the best or, you know, there are, if you make music that combines hip hop and opera, or you make music that combines um, an operatic songstress uh, with a metal background, you know, or 
you, you know, there's, there's all these different combinations and fusions and, and different things that people do that you would never hear some of these things on the radio. You would never yeah. have heard them on the radio years ago, yeah. but yeah. you're hearing them on the streaming platforms now. Yeah. And, and a lot of this music and these, these, this music has lots and lots of fans. Yeah. So, and it's not just the music itself that's drawing the fans. It's the artists. They are yeah. sharing of themselves. They're sharing yeah. their stories and what brought them to where they are now. Yeah. And that is keep, that's the stickiness that's keeping the fans engaged and keeping mm -hmm. them coming back for more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your music, I, I hear, um, I, I keep hearing, you know, some people saying, oh, well, you should write songs that sound like this. And mm -hmm. because, well, and this in the gospel world, this kind of goes back to, you know, yeah, you need to write songs that have these particular phrases in it. You know, in the gospel world, there's all these different phrases that we say all the time, like God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. You know, <laughs> and, yeah. and he woke me up yeah. this morning and he started me on my way, you know, and people yeah. are putting these phrases in their songs all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm here to say that you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. found this obscure verse, because, you know, that you were, you were studying your word one day, and you found this obscure verse, but, but it means something to you in your life. Mm -hmm. And you decide to put it in a song. And it's not one of those phrases that we say all the time in church or whatever. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do it because yeah. it means something. If it means something to you, it's going to mean something to, to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It with doesn't that, have to be main. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be mainstream. It doesn't have to be like, you know, everybody else, what everybody else does. Mm -hmm. But you put it out there, you share the story behind it, you tell people where it came from. People will identify and they will start following you and listening to your music. And guess what? Now that they're following you, you can now transform these followers and listeners into fans and then into yeah. super fans who yeah. will advocate on your behalf and Definitely. help you get your, take your music ministry to the next level. But you yeah. have to, you know, but it, you can absolutely do that as long as you're connecting with people. It doesn't have to be mainstream. Absolutely not. Yeah. So I really like what you said there. I suppose there's this sort of, um, it goes back to sort of like, you know, should my music be on the radio it's sort of because that's what I've seen people do before and and I know we've got experience that it's all about the story isn't it it's all about the meaning it's all about the values and what it is it's also about connection isn't it what does Absolutely. you know what does what you say or sing resonate with other people and why and also if you share of yourself, as you said earlier, that, you know, people will think, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm like Simone, you know, or I'm, I'm like, I'm like Dawn, you know, that they're saying things that that mean something to me. And then and, and that means that when they say something else, when we say something else that I'll, you know, I will give it some thought and I will definitely listen to it. So you could you in, and then it's all not about it's around um you know you're, you're saying why it means something to you you're saying it from your heart you're saying it authentically but you're sort of telling a story about why it's important telling the story about your own journey so so, so um uh there's a bit of an x-factor thing for uk residents and i think it was in america too it's sort of like the journey that you know mm -hmm. but these artists go on why it means something to them and you know why you should listen you should listen to them. and then it, that gives meaning and resonance to what the person is actually singing or or saying Absolutely. and then and then they you sort of be create this bond don't you around that you're going on the journey with them and you're feeling you're feeling something around the same thing so and it's around doing that so but the thing I'm going to say is sometimes people feel a way about doing that don't they they don't feel either the confidence to do that they sort of like have, can't imagine themselves doing that and um it doesn't come it doesn't come naturally to that I always say I like to chat I'll tell you my story you know all the time you know all day every day you know but some people struggle with that and you know they might have brilliant voices you know, they might have really something to give but they that the actual marketing you know of that and you know um and before maybe they would just rely on their lovely voice being on the radio but the, the game has changed doesn't it so what would you say to people who are struggling with that what I would say is practice. 
practice telling your story and mm -hmm. sharing, sharing what it is that brought you to where you are now. Uh, some of the key, the key experiences in your life, because you're not on this journey alone. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as an artist, I just, I wrote an article for a magazine recently and they were mm -hmm. asking me like five things that a person should consider before uh, getting into a music career. And one of the things I said was that, remember that as an artist, people are looking at you. You have a stage, you have a platform. People mm -hmm. are looking at you. You will be a role model, whether you want to be or not. Absolutely. So, um, so if you, so go ahead and share your story. Having a fan base is, especially as an independent artist, you're not um, gone of the days where the label are going to pull you up off the street mm -hmm. and create this aloof persona for you where nobody can touch you. You're over there and we're over here and we're just supposed mm -hmm. to admire you from afar. Um, that doesn't really happen that much these days. You know, it happens for some people, but not for not for most of us, right? Um, if you are here and you're as an independent artist without that label backing, um, it is you have to build a relationship with your fans. Absolutely. And that relationship comes with sharing experiences and sharing stories with other people. Yeah. Um, so what I said in the article was that if there are things in your life as, as a Christian artist, um, I don't, I don't know how secular artists think about this, but as a Christian artist, mm -hmm. um, one of the things I like to tell them is to, if, if you're going through something, you're, you're, you're dealing with alcoholism. You haven't gotten, you haven't gotten a handle on it. You're not in recovery. Um, you're, there's stuff going on in your life that just would not look good on a public stage as a Christian artist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say deal with it first before you reveal it to yeah. your audience, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. When, when you have, when you get to a place where you can say, God has brought me through that mm -hmm. situation and I am standing here today and can say, I have the victory. That I believe is a great time to share it with others because now you're, now you're encouraging them and letting them know that they can that they can do it too. If you did it, they can do it too. I but if you're that. still struggling, you're still going through it. And <laughs> yeah. you know, you're, you're on stage one minute, hands raised, you're praising the Lord. And you know, <laughs> you're singing these, this beautiful music. And then you come off the stage and everybody makes you angry and pisses you off and you're cursing everybody <laughs> out. People are looking at that. Yeah. It doesn't look good. It no, doesn't look good. Look. So, no. right. So if you don't have the victory over some of these things in your life, don't share it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, deal I think with that's it. really good. Yeah. Deal with it. And then, and then share it. Right. So, yeah. Um, but at this stage of life, there are some things that you have, that you have um, gotten the victory over. And mm -hmm. can say that God has brought me through that, and I can share, I can share um, how how we did it, and you know, and I am I am um, standing here a conqueror, you know. Yeah. And go ahead and share that. We've all come through stuff. We may still be going through some stuff, but we have yeah. all come through stuff. So we can share the things that <laughs> we've gone <laughs> that we through. Have Absolutely. <laughs> And I love that because I think it's about you know, showing you're being vulnerable and, you know, and there's, I think there's a definite difference between people who show their vulnerability, but there is something around, I know, I know I feel this, particularly as a sort of like a healthcare professional, that, you know, you, you can't help people if you're, if you're, you're, you're going through the thing and you're not, you're not managing it at the minute. So how can you go out there and embody what you're what you're talking about so well, that's one of the reasons I go to the gym because you know how can I talk about health and wellness when I'm sort of like you know not very fit at all so you know that is um that's something about embodying it and it's also about doing something and about the going through the journey realizing where you are realizing where you're struggling and actually doing something about it and that and definitely you can you can share that and you know and it's sort of like it and even if you're not totally through it I would say that you're working towards it is also something that is also something to share because you know I, I know 
you know a, a lot of christian people that they struggle with a, a lot of a lot of things but so it, that's mm-hmm. part of make, what makes you human isn't it really you know yeah. you're gonna struggle you're gonna struggle and that you know that you that you're working your, your way through it but you know and, it, and it's yeah. also being on brand isn't it for you know for yeah. being on brand definitely so i was gonna ask you i feel like yeah Oh, sorry. One thing, one other thing yeah, about that. Yeah. I feel because you did say, like, you know, if, if you you're going through stuff, we're all going yeah. through stuff. Um, if you can share what you're going through, I feel like in a positive way or in an yeah. encouraging way, yeah. then um, then I think that's that's good to share. Whereas if you are super depressed and you're down in the dumps and you can't, you have nothing positive to say and your audience is like oh my gosh do I need to call a doctor for you do I need to pray for you what, you know you know that's that's a, that's a different situation <laughs> I, have, I have been there I have been there when I thought you know what that person needs to see a doctor you know they, they shouldn't be here they should they, right. they, should be the, they should be at the hospital you know and I have actually phoned people afterwards and yeah okay so yeah you're absolutely you're absolutely right you're absolutely right it's sort of like you know yeah, that's not you what know, you want your audience to say hey are you okay are you you doing okay <laughs> hey you feeling all right too true too true so you you mentioned about sort of like building your fan base and you know and how important that is you know and to sort of like have a community I guess that's what you're talking about people who who want to see you do well who are going through the journey journey with you you know how important is that and I know that's something you teach Simone well as a, a music artist who wants to be on the large platforms, be on the um, be on the the Grammy charts, um, walk across the stage at the Stellars, and you know get your yeah. award and all of that. Yeah. Um, artists, I hear artists talk about that all the time. You know, I want to I want to be number one on the charts. Well, um, you only get there if people are listening to your music and they are buying your buying your stuff whether you're selling your music and or selling your merch so the fan base is extremely important basically ultimately yes you are a creative person you're an artist you're you know you're you're a musician but the people who get to the heights that we're talking about ultimately they are business people Mm -hmm. and what do our business coaches always tell us is you're not really a business person if you have no, no clients and no customers. Yeah, true, true, true. As a musician, your clients and your customers are your fans. Yeah. You don't have any fans. You don't have a ministry. You don't have a music yeah. career. You yeah. basically have an expensive hobby. <laughs> it's yeah. what you have. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so those customers, those fans are extremely important. Because, um, yeah, you may want your music on the radio, but who's listening to it? Yeah. You may want your um, you may want your music on the charts, um, or you may be wanting to walk across the stage the stage and get the award at the sellers. But who is cheering for you in the audience? Who's voting yeah. for you? Yeah. Um, on the ballots, right? Those are the fans. Those are the fans. The fans are the ones that push you to these levels, you know, um, who is it? It's Chance the Rapper, Lecrae, and there was another guy, but anyway, they just kind of burst on the scene. Mm-hmm. They burst in onto the scene and into our, into our collective consciousness um, after having done all the hard work to build their fan bases on a local and national level. Um, and they got to large platforms without ever having been on the radio mm-hmm. because they hustled and they and they built these relationships with their fan bases mm-hmm. on those local levels and on the internet and you know on these streaming platforms and those of us who are you know paying attention to other things we're we're not seeing any of this because we're not part of the fan base but mm-hmm. They're building up this fan base. That's what they did. And now we all know their names. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the fans that push you to, to the bigger heights. 
And then now, and they did it without the labels. Now the labels and the radio and all these and in big industry tastemakers and gatekeepers mm-hmm. are now calling them and saying, hey, can you be on our platform? Hey, can you come over here? Yeah. Why? Because if they, they get bring- these artists who have built these large fan bases, guess what? The fans are going to start looking at them as well. Absolutely. So absolutely. It's kind of like it's a win-win situation, right? You, a lot of artists, they tell me, I want to be on the radio. I want my music on the radio. Well, radio has a lot of competition today. They have competition for listeners. Mm -hmm. They have to have lots and lots of listeners in order to keep their advertisers. So if you can't help them with the listeners, then why should they play your music? You're not helping them out at all. Yeah. Yeah. They may be helping you by putting, you know, your music in front of the listeners that they already have, but you're not helping them by bringing them any, any new listeners. So why should they play your music? Yeah. Build that. Absolutely. It's fundamental. That's absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and that is, that is the same for any business, isn't it really that, you know, you need to build your customer, your client base and create loyal, loyal clients. And it's, um, and there are lots of ways to do it. And, and you gave some brilliant examples of, of it being done. And I know that you, in your work, Simone, that's what you help people do to build their fan bases, isn't it? Absolutely. It's fundamental. So that's one of the first things I talk about. It's, it's the thing that I press with uh, any artist who comes to me for help. I need help with my career. I want to get on the radio. You know, when they tell me I want to get on the radio, I have to steer them back towards, well, why do you want to be on the radio? Shouldn't you be building a fan base first? <laughs> Absolutely. So do you have a, have you got something to share with the listeners that's going to help them with this? Well, I do have a guide that I will be putting out there because, um, because the first question I hear from, uh, from most gospel artists is, um, I, I want to get on the radio. Can you help me get on the radio? So since that is the thing that is forefront in, in your mind as a gospel artist, I put together a guide that shows you exactly how to do it. It's not, yeah. not easy, but it can be done. Brilliant. And it's a great introduction to your work, isn't it, Simone, and the other things that you were doing. So, and I'll put a link um, in the show notes to Simone's guide, which I know will be really, really helpful for people who want to get on the radio, but also to explore um, the other stuff that Simone does around fan fan base building, um, et cetera, and her programmes and her coaching programmes as well. Um, how do you, so I'm a nurse, I ask everybody this, and you know, we've talked a little bit about it um, before. How do you, so there's two questions. How do you keep yourself positive, po- focused and positive? You know, you know, I know it's not always been easy going and, and, you know, there's things around, you know, keeping your income up, sort of like getting clients and things like that. So how do you keep yourself focused and positive? And then how do you manage your own health and well-being? It's you, know, it's, it's, you know, and we've talked about, you know, you've got continuing illness as well. You, you know, you're a, you're a solopreneur at the minute and, you know, it's a lot, isn't it? And then um, we spoke previously that you don't really live near your, your family, then a different part of the country. So how do you do it, Simone? Well, uh, to stay focused and positive, um, I listen to, um, well, I listen to the Bible every morning. Mm-hmm. And I listen to positive um, um, motivation, you know, from um, from somebody who who believes in the word. Mm-hmm. So um, so that helps me out a lot. Um, and then I also try to keep my dreams and goals forefront in my mind to remind me why it is I'm doing this. Um, I'm actually in my office right now. Um, I have my vision board up and, you know, every time I look at it, I look at what I'm working towards. And one of the things that's on my vision board is uh, a picture of my family. Um, you know, that's my mother is aging. I want to be able to, um, to help her. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to be closer, be able to, to visit them as, as Mm -hmm. often as I can. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I keep that forefront of my mind. Um, and as far as like uh, my health and wellness, like I said before, you know, I try to 
uh, to eat healthy and drink lots of water, um, not take in too much sugar and um, get out as much as possible, you know, especially when it's sunny out and, you know, get some sun. And um, I like to, uh, I like to watch um, stand up comedians. Because you, like, you like British ones, don't you? I think that's the only reason I like British me, ones. I like, I, like some, I like a few American ones too. Like um, um, uh, Tiffany Haddish is a favorite. Yeah. Kevin Hart is a favorite. Yeah. But yeah, my my uh, um, my favorite British one, I think, is uh, Gina Yashare. Yeah, she's um, fabulous. Yeah, there was another one. Was there another British one? I can't remember. Anyway. But yeah, because they keep the laughs going and yeah. laughter is good medicine. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, you keep up with your friends and your family. Like we speak, like, no, no, we try to speak at least once a week, don't we really to talk about, to keep yes. things going. It's really important to sort of like to talk to somebody about who's going through the same thing. So we're accountability partners. So we sort of keep each other accountable okay. from a business um, point of view and keep each other going. I know that helps me a lot too so yeah, um me too definitely oh bless you and so how can people keep in contact with you keep up with what you're doing and you know if they want to work with you what's the best way to contact you Simone well the best way to contact me is to I am me on either Facebook Instagram or LinkedIn um, I do answer those messages um, you can find me on all of those platforms at Eshe Music, E-C-H-E Music. And uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Oh, and then my website is eshemusic.com. That's fantastic. Um, we're coming to the end of the show, Simone. It's been so good to talk to you. So good to catch up with you. You know, I do catch up with you once a week anyway, but it's a good sort of like an update um, from the podcast we did a year ago. Um, it's been absolutely like to to share your journey, so where you where you've moved on and sort of like who you're working with and the really good things that you're doing. Is there a final word or a tip that you want to leave the audience with and share with the audience before we go? My biggest tip is to really take what you've learned and apply it, actually do it. Yeah. Um, one of the things I think that stopped me for a lot of years with, um, from moving forward was it was analysis paralysis yeah. and, you know, you're just listening to podcasts or reading the books, but not actually doing what they say. And so you don't move forward. So my biggest tip is to apply what you learn and, um, and to never give up. That's fantastic. And, and you don't give up. You are very resilient and you, know, you, keep, you keep going, don't you? You really do. And you're an a, a absolute inspiration to me and, and around uh, uh, keeping going. In spite of, you know, we've been all been through so much. Everybody listening, I'm sure, has had their own challenges with the pandemic, with isolation, with you know, keeping their business career, keeping the money rolling in and everything. I think it's so important to you know, keep your dreams. You talked about, you know, visualising what you want to do and you know and you know and having those sort of like daily reminders and what's inspiring you about what you want to do and why you're doing it so I absolutely love that it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the on the show love that and um thank you so much Simone so that's it for the Dawn Jarvis. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. That's it for the Dawn Jarvis show today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we will cut it. The Dawn Jarvis show is brought to you by dawnjarvis.com. Take care and hopefully we'll speak soon. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Dawn Jarvis show. If you enjoyed this episode, there are two things you can do. Number one, leave Dawn a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. It would mean so much to her if you took a moment out of your time to post your thoughts on the show. It will help Dawn reach so many more people and help them with their well-being. Number two, subscribe to Dawn's email list, The Diverse Nurse Digest, using the link in the show notes. Until the next time, thank you and goodbye.